Hello, I'm Adam Kautz. I I'm going to start with an instrumental, just because uh, I'm a drummer, and I uh, have been diddling on guitars since I was 12 years old, and here's basically a diddle that I've manifested into a song. Yeah, uh, yeah. There's like a, a structure I have, but aside from that, yes, I do come up with it in the moment. Okay, I'm gonna play this fret, but I'm gonna play around this fret. It's an energy song, and no, there isn't a name for it. What's the name of the album? It's called Even If It's a Dream, Who Cares? Everything from like what I just played to like house music to garage music is 20 songs of AMA music and even if it's a dream who cares so I put it out there 10 years ago when I was like 10 or 12 years old I begged my parents for a guitar for Hanukkah but I never got guitar lessons sixth grade rolled around and my dad said if you join band class I'll get you a drum set because those are free drum lessons so I joined band class and I got my first drum set for Hanukkah, I don't know, the rest is history. Every time I've seen a speaker or a drummer or something on the street, I'm like, I'm taking it home, fixing it. I like this stuff. You have amassed quite a collection over the years, right? I think so. <laughs> you have quite a bit of um, stuff, stuff, <laughs> stuff. <laughs> but it's, it's sentimental to me, right? Invaluable. You know, everyone wants to claim what neighborhood in New York they had lived in. Fuck you, I've lived in New York, like, my whole life. I'm, like, 36 years old. You move. Sometimes you're on the Upper West Side, sometimes you're in the East Village, sometimes you're in West Village, sometimes you're in Greenpoint, sometimes you're in, like, Bushwick. Sometimes that stuff, when you're going from those places to those places, you just can't ditch. 
that's how I have 700 records. Anyway, you can buy that stuff for me. <laughs> it's all for sale. No, let's do a cover. clear my throat I really like the lighting but the rest just gets my goat I gotta go feeling feeling gotta go feeling feeling I think at the end of the day, a cover done rightfully, so is an appreciation. Your song is so cool, I want to play it. I want to be so cool, right? Otherwise, go home and write your own song. I think covers are flattering. With that said, influential artist is Keith Haring. Yeah, hands down. When I was a child, my, my parents sent me to this summer camp called the Armory Art Center. That's when I learned that you can draw stick figures and have dogs jump through their stomachs and that is art you don't need to do portraits keith i learned about him in 1992 <laughs> and i went oh you can just like say what your brain says and that's art so he, he's my most influential artist and jim morrison's my favorite musician Okay, top five albums if you have to be stranded. Are we going for it? Yeah. All right, top five. I would do any Doors, like the greatest hits, put it on there. Any of Now That's What I Call Music, just throw one of those on there, just for like the songs I don't like, but you still want to hear like that, then. <laughs> Either Weezer, the Blue Album, or Pinkerton. Either one. After that, Weezer's not Weezer. So, but the Blue Album or Pinkerton, I would throw on, uh, fuck. 
something. Uh, where am I at? I'm at three already. You got three. Okay, so then I would throw on like something cliche, like no effects or rancid, but I'm choosing between the two, and I would probably go with. Okay, I would do Operation Ivy. They're one token album, full album. Okay, we're at four. While we're at that, I would do Philip Glass. Can't just be like upbeat all the time. Einstein on the beach, Philip Glass. Tops the list, baby. Yeah. White Lighters is a project that it's never gonna die. It's like never gonna break up. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's kind of like it's like you two. The lead singer Tony Prince is a good friend of mine. We we've been playing music now for like 12 years, not together, but we've been playing like in the same circle. We understand each other. We like each other. We like each other's vibes and white letters is just the umbrella of when we come together and we want to work with each other and that's white letters and sometimes he's tony island he also has an act called savants that has two albums out from this west coast uh, label by uh shaheen elwitt he toured around quite a bit and did some djing what was it like to be doing that in new york during the mid-2000s the greatest thing in the world that was my intention in the mid-2000s. I was born in New York, but I wasn't raised in New York, but I always had family in New York, so I always made my destination in New York. My life was always based around like playing music and wanting to play music and being an entertainer and et cetera, et cetera. Coming back and like jumping into it was all about jumping into it, and that's what it was. There you go. We got it. It was is about jumping into it. As far as I'm concerned, I mean, I unfortunately, given the point where we are right now, COVID time. Let's be frank. And my heyday, 2004, 2005. You know, a good time away. There's no people waiting in line for clubs anymore, and there's no like it people. There's no it crowd, and that's what it was like when I was a kid. We were all like. We were all stoked about going out of and hearing Block Party and like who's DJing and like what are we going to wear and who are we going to impress. And it was shallow and it was this and that, but like, come on, give us a break. That's all we were doing. We were being shallow on that superficial level. Like we weren't like trying to like frack. We weren't like doing oil drills. We just wanted to wear like plaid pants. I've only realized within like the past year that I'm 36. I still think that I'm like the the 20 year old that like moved to Bushwick. Oh, because I am. Let's try another song, I guess. I don't know.
everything you want me Nothing else can stop me Baby, if you want me, baby, you got me Nothing else can stop me Nothing can stop me with you I kill myself to die by your side I kill myself to die with you I'd kill myself to die by your side Kill myself to die with you Cause baby if you want me baby you got me Even if I'm not me nothing can stop me Baby if you want me baby you got me even if I'm not me, nothing can stop me with you. I kill myself to die by your side. I, I just use a, a, a Boss RC3 pedal. Actually, I, I, I actually hated looping. I, I was so against it. And then uh, years ago, a few years ago, I got the unemployment lottery and I had a few extra bucks. And I was just like, let me go buy one of these things and like see what it's all about. And I've got, no pun intended, it's just like a great uh, accompaniment. A practice friend, if nothing else, like... Practice makes perfect. One of the things I wanted to ask you too is I saw you playing, uh, singing into your headphones. Uh, what is that? Uh... So basically, if you're, if you're, if you're, if you're anyone watching, God bless you, first of all. <laughs> Second of all, uh, uh, I, I, when I was a kid, I quickly found out that a microphone and uh, a headphone are the same thing. If, if you plug a microphone into a speaker, it's gonna play music out the microphone. It's just gonna sound like shit. But if you plug a headphone in, like, uh, vice versa, you know. So I learned that. I grew up with having to, like, build my own amps and systems and this and that. So I, I played with a lot of Radio Shack mics. And I actually, um, you can use headphones as microphones. They all receive and and direct accordingly. I know you're fond of doing it yourself, a DIY a solution to uh, to creating. And you know, does that go to your theory uh, as to the way you like to create art? I think so. I think so, 100 percent. Because I like to participate with people, but like. I'm just going to make something, you know, and I guess that's DIY, right? I'm just going to do this. I'm just going to create this song, this this ranch, this painting, this dish, this whatever. I'm going to do it because I want to. I guess that's the quote-unquote DIY. I want to. Uh, with that said, <laughs> there's no deep thought behind that. My only deep thought is I don't want to capitalize on anything. I don't want to be financially behold to anything. I want everything to be accessible to everyone. Whatever I try to create and do, and I've said this for years and years and years to my own detriment, when I've done like radio shows and this and that, like East Village Radio and this and that, I've had new songs out and I, stupid to me, whatever, but I, I list my songs for free and I tell people that they're for free and, and if you can't find them for free, just steal them, like download it, steal it. That has always been my sentiment. You're like a dollar and 37 cents is not gonna make my day. But if my song makes your afternoon riding your bicycle through the hillside, wherever, fuck yeah. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. That's way more valuable than like 99 cents to 
me that I'm not getting because I only get point zero zero six cents from that. So would you say the impact is is the value in what you create? In what regard? The, if somebody's enjoying it and, and that's that's worth more than the money you would make. Oh, hundred percent. No, all I was going to say is like, I can't stop. <laughs> I'm going to keep creating. Whether I make a million dollars or negative million dollars, tomorrow I'm going to wake up and think of something that I want to paint or draw or write or this or that. I'm not going to stop, so... So does it do something for you emotionally, mentally, that uh, is therapeutic? What does it do for you personally? Two different things, because I'm pausing, because this is a deep one, guys, audience of Dan. It used to be my thought bubble. I used to dream of, like, where I'm going to go on tour, where I'm going to book a show, what I'm going to do. But currently, we're exiled from pretty much the world, Right? We're not allowed to go anywhere. Like, I look on Skyscanner, and we can't go to Europe, South America. I feel like my dreams have been robbed a little bit. At the same time, we have to just dream bigger. That's how we're doing exactly what we're doing. <laughs> yeah, we want to fucking leave this country. We want to go. We want to play shows. We want to go do things. We want to entertain. We want to see people. We want to have friends. We want to shake hands. We want to have cocktails. We want to have sex. We want to do this. We want to do that. You're telling us we can't? We're trying with the best we can do, with what we can do, to do what we can do. So we're having a fucking show upstairs, and then every Thursday night, you come downstairs, and we're going to have a secret show around a bonfire, and we're continuing. You created a space. Uh, actually, you created more than one space. Um, tell, us, tell us a little bit about the uh, spaces that you've created during the pandemic. <laughs> good friend of mine, Marcus, he had the shithole light across the street from his house and he kept saying like, I'm going to turn that into a garden, I'm going to turn it into a park. And everyone said, yeah, 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 yeah. Pandemic came around and pandemic was a real thing in New York City. If come March, doors were shut, everything was closed. He was bored and his poor dog, who we all loved, passed away. So he went across the street and he just started cleaning the trash of that lot and neighbors got inspired by it, and they wanted to make it more than what it is. And they wanted to turn it into a community garden, and incorporate it, and it got to a good place. But the best place it got was it inspired other people like myself to go like, let me go clean the trash out at the place next to my house. And next to my house, a hurricane came, the wall fell down, so I didn't have to break in, I just walked in. And once the wall fell down, I picked up trash, and I got my weed whacker, and I, cu I cut the grass, and then my friend and my roommate Henry came out, and we picked up more, and then my neighbor Javier came, and we lifted some heavy shit. My friend Marcus from, you know, the previous place, the garden, came, and we built a fence. Vesola, my neighbor, and Hillary, my wife, came, and they carried cement, and they smashed it up. Boom, next thing you know, Round two, we made the Neverland Ranch. Cheers, it's empty. To whom it may concern, we, not me, have The Matinee, which is a rock and roll show. The first one was hosted at the Hercules Garden, and it was six bands. I curated it, and the main points of my curation that I wanted to stick to were rock and roll, number one. Number two, do you live in this neighborhood? Number three, not just boys. I want boys, girls, and whatever gender you are. Number three, not just white kids. We accomplished it. It was a great show. Round two is happening at the Neverland Ranch. It's literal neighbors, whatever gender you are, <laughs> literal whatever race you are. At the end of the day, Shut up, it's punk rock. It's punk rock, fuck you. Like, yeah, be angry. You see the end? I don't know.
Do I have a last song? Yeah. I guess while I'm plugged in, I'll just do like an outro. Fuck yeah, because golden retrievers in New England get bandanas. Their homes, like, take care of them, and they're always called, like, sport or scout or this, and they get, like, the front seat, and they get to go to soccer practice. Golden retrievers in New England have, like, the greatest life in the world. They get scraps from the table, and they get to go to the barbecue. They get both, and they get a cool bandana. The worst thing that happens to them is they get a shitty name, like Dover. Hey, Dover! And you're like, why do you call your dog Dover? And it's like, the dog's like, fuck you, man, I'm eating steak. Like, don't fuck this up. Yes, I want to be a golden retriever in New England. Do, 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 do. So, goop, goop. Do, do. So this is Adam, this, this, this is Adam, this is Adam Couts. Yo, check for him. We're in Bushwick, Brooklyn. Find us at the Neverland Ranch. Find him there. All right, thanks, guys. This has been Dan Victor. Dan Victor does DVD concerts. <laughs>